everyone and welcome back to my craft room and here on my YouTube channel Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. Thanks so much for tuning in today. You can see that I have my new mini catalog opened up to this uh, collection. It's called a sweet collection and anytime it's a collection it means you're getting like the whole shebang. So with this particular one you get the stamps, the dies, the designer series paper, some baker's twine that comes in three different colors. These are beautiful. They're lemon lolly, balmy blue, and flirty flamingo. And then you also get these light, um, rainbow adhesive back dots, and they're in the same colors. They're beautiful pool party and uh, flirty flamingo, azure afternoon, um, balmy blue, I think some fresh freesia. But this is what the suite looks like when you're not looking at it in the catalog. And I think it looks much prettier in person than it does on the page of the catalog, which is true with most everything. Um, a picture never quite does it justice. Let me zoom out just a little bit so that I can show you all of these beautiful uh, things. The First of all, the stamp set. You get one, two, three different types of balloons. You get two different baskets, and then you've got these centerpieces that you can build your balloon with, with um, putting these in. You also have hang in there, wish big, up, up and away, hooray, it's your birthday. Just a note to lift you up. Beautiful sentiments. You could use these for a variety of occasions. It is a photopolymer stamp set, yes, and I have some of mine out already on blocks. Um, it, it is a photopolymer, which means you can see through it. So when you're stamping, you can line these up perfectly. If you have a stamp apparatus or some sort of stamping platform, I would suggest you use it with these. It just makes it a little easier. I'm going to lay that to the side, and then I want to show you the dies. Not only will the dies cut out your images, they will also cut out and allow you to build your own balloon. Here is the little piece that goes underneath with the basket. You've got this little uh, banner of flags that you can put on it. Uh, the, the different baskets, you can cut your own basket out yourself or you can stamp it and cut it. Uh, and you have hearts and just different shapes of balloons. And then you've got this beautiful banner absolutely a beautiful uh, set to have in your collection. So I wasn't taken with it when I first saw it in the catalog, but the more I looked at it, the better I, I liked it. And I think what sold me on it was these colors. I think they're just, they're screaming spring. And I think by this time of the year after Christmas, we're looking into the end of January and the beginning of February. And I think everybody's probably a little weary with cold weather and we want some bright spring colors. And this set does not disappoint. But I love Baker's Twine. And you, like I said, you get three full spools of that in these beautiful Gordy Flamingo Lemon Lolly and Balmy Blue. There is our, um, our, do our dots, which are beautiful. And this, I pulled out one sheet of each one of the papers because I wanted you to see just how pretty this paper is. And this is what I call side A or the prominent side of the paper. And then when you turn it over, you have more muted type colors that are, um, I, I guess you would say less busy than the front side, but all of these are those beautiful colors, pool party, balmy blue, uh, bubble bath, they're, they're, and then you've got the multiple colors that you can use with all the different colors. I love the stripe. So I'm gonna show you what I have in mind today. Um, the card, and I kind of played around with this, and I saw this fold. It was so funny because I watched a little bit of Creative 8 yesterday and I was that's a, an event that's put on every quarter by my um, upline, Brandy Cox. Her, Sharon Armstrong, uh, Connie Stewart, and Jackie Bullhase uh, combine their talents and do a Creative 8 once every quarter. And yesterday was our winner one. And Connie Stewart did a card, but she did hers with uh, half sheets of uh, diagonal, which was a little bit different. I saw this card design on uh, Don Griffith uh, site, and I loved this because it is an expandable card. Y'all know how much I love a fun fold, and I thought, how cute would this card be? And this is actually my prototype because I've got my measurements written inside of this one and on the back. So this will actually go into my little file folder that we made here a week or so ago. 
And I will put this in here in my little folded compartment. And this will be another one of my templates. So I'm going to actually put a little label here and call it templates. And so that I have card templates here. But I've jot down my notes uh, on this little legal pad. And then I keep my cards in here. So it's just a real neat little file folder. And everything is magnetic shut. I've got a place for a pen. I absolutely love that piece. And I've been using it quite a bit. I am going to pull out, because I told you you will need a stamp positioner, I'm just going to pull out my Misty and use it because it was handy and right here by me. Um, I'm not a fan. I will, I'll say I'm not a fan, but the glue press kind of changed my mind. So this uh, My Sweet Petunia's uh, glue press definitely changed my mind about uh, her products. This right here has become my right hand, and I love it. So I'm, I'm going to be putting some links on, on my Amazon links to show you that you can purchase that there. You can also pick up a Misty if you are in need of a stamp positioning tool, or you can pick up one from another company, which whatever suits you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do my card base this time out of Lemon Lolly. And I'm going to show you how to cut this because we're going to need to make some cuts. You know, I'm going to have to pull that back out because I need those measurements off of that card. And I should have thought about that before I tucked it away. So let's pull that back out. And let's go ahead and look at my measurements. I know on the back I have my card base. And it's eight and a quarter by five and a half. Now, normally we would put this in and cut off, uh, cut this down to eight and a quarter, which is quarter inch off of here but don't do that don't do not do that first cut your piece at five and a half this way put your 11 inch side up into your trimmer like this and I'm going to show you why there's always a purpose for what we do uh, so put this in at five and a half on the 11 inch uh, side and go ahead and cut that piece first now that saves this whole piece here because we're going to need that as well so let's turn this now, and we know this is eight and a half, and I need my piece to be eight and a quarter. So I'm just going to take a quarter inch off on this end. That way I don't have to pull out my arm or anything. And now I have the piece that is five and a half, five and a half by eight and one fourth. So that is our card base. Then we're going to need some of these little pieces. We are going to need a two pieces cut out of this. One needs to be three by four. So this one needs to be three inches and I'm cutting it on the eight and a half inch side. Three by four. That will be our first panel. And then we're going to need another one that is three and a half by four and three fourths. Double check and make sure that's right. Three and a half by three by four and three fourths. So three and three fourths is going to be right there. So I'm going to cut that piece off. And then I'm going to cut this to three and a half. Something like that. Is that right? Somehow that doesn't look right. <laughs> let me let me double check that. Three, let's see. Three and three fourths. No, it's three and a half. Three and a half. I knew that didn't look right. Three and a half by four and three fourths. So that's going to put it all the way over to here. Now, the only waste we're going to have out of that entire card um, piece of cardstock is this little bit right here. And these are perfect to put into your scrap bin for sentiments or whatever. And we may even use a piece of this on the card. So I'm going to leave them close over here. Now I'm going to get out my scoreboard because I do like to score on it when I'm doing multiple scorings. So this is our Simply Scored scoring tool. And I'm going to take that card base and I'm going to lay it in on that 8 and 1 fourth inch line, which means when I look at it across the top, it goes from the corner, the left-hand corner of my scoreboard, over to eight and a quarter. I'm going to use my stylist, and I am going to score in four places. 
And we are going to score at uh, one, one inch, two inches, three inches, and four inches. Now that's all the scoring we have to do. So simple. Just a one, two, three, four. I love a fun full card that's easy, and this one it will fit that uh, bill for you as well. The first thing I want to do is I want to fold my four and a, um, my four inch, and you see it's showing just over a little bit because it's we cut that down to eight and a quarter rather than eight and a half. So that first one is going to be a, just a little bit shy. I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to burnish each one of these score lines to give myself a nice crisp edge. And then we're just going to accordion fold. So fold that one back and burnish. Fold this one forward and burnish. And you want to make sure when you're folding these that everything is lining up nice and straight. You don't want these to be off at all. So make sure that you're getting them lined up nice and even. And then we have this last one that's going to go back this way. And I'm going to fold this one like that and burnish it down. And when I after I get this down, I will show you. Basically, what you're going to have is a mountain valley, mountain valley fold. And it's going to look like this when you hold it up. So your little piece should look like a W. And that will be, this will be the front of your card. So again, I'm going to furnish everything down really nice and tight. And now remember these pieces. This one is going to go right here on the front. And this one is going to go into that next valley. And that is our card. How easy is that? But we do need to cover those pieces with some designer series paper. And that is where our beautiful uh, paper is going to come into play. So I'm going to bring this back over. And let's decide which one of these we want to use. Now, I want to cut some balloons out of this one. So I'm going to save a piece of that out. And I think for my background piece, I want this piece. And I know that, that that mat back there is going to be four by five and a quarter, a standard size mat, and that's going to go in the very back. The front piece, I think I want um, hmm. I'm looking for my card and I I'm not seeing it, and I had it just a minute ago. So, but I'll, I'll tell you what, let's just wing it. Let's do that front piece with a piece of how about the balmy blue. I think that'll be pretty on our front piece. And then the piece in the middle, let's see what else we have left. I don't want that. I want something a little more colorful. How about we're doing lemon lolly, so I want something that's going to, um, let's do this piece right here. This is pretty, and it's got lemon lolly in it, and I think that would be gorgeous. So those are the pieces that I am planning on using. I think those would be really, really pretty for this particular card. So we're going we're gonna to use this color on the small mat. And that small mat needs, my card was right here. <laughs> I did use the blue on the front of this one. And that's what I was looking to see. That first mat needs to be two and three fourths by three and three fourths. So let's bring up our trimmer and let's go ahead and cut that. So two and three fourths right there by three and three fourths. And then this is going to be our first mat that will go, that will mat right here. 
And by matting these pieces with um, designer series paper, you're just going to get a really pretty look on your card. So for the one for the back, we know that that one is four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to bring this one over to four inches and then turn it and cut it off at five and one fourth. So something about here. And that's going to go in our very back panel right there. Look how beautiful those colors pair together. I mean, is that not gorgeous? And then, of course, we need the one for the piece in the middle. And I chose this one here. And this piece is going to be three and a quarter by four and a half. So three and a quarter. Uh, four and a half. Is that what I said? Yep, four and a half. And then we'll just slice that right there. Now, save your little scraps because these will come in handy for other little things that if you wanted to make. Uh, I never throw my scraps away. I hang on to all of them because you never know when something will come up and you need that little scrap for something. So don't throw those away. All right, I'm going to put that down just like that. And that one is going to go in here. And this is going to go on the outside. So I'm going to go off camera and glue all of these mat down. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do some die cutting. We're going to do some stamping. And then we're going to put this card together. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, I have all laid down all of my pieces of designer series paper onto my pieces of card base. So now all we have to do is line these up on the edge to the bottom of each one of these um, panels right here. So instead of um, trying to put glue here and not knowing for sure where I'm going to get it, I'm going to actually apply my glue to the left left hand side of my piece. So when you turn it over, it'll be your right. And then I'm just going to make a swirl of glue about that same width that this is. And then I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to bring everything right to the edge and the bottom, making sure that everything's lining up perfect. Just like that. And once I'm pleased with it, then I'm going to give it a press. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to drop it in just like that. And it's going to go right behind that one on that next mountain fold. So this one's already glued down. And so the very next one is where this will drop in. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put glue all the way down and using a little circular motion like so. And then I'm going to lay that in just like that and give it a press. And this is so easy to make because your lines are already there for you. So there's no guessing as to where that goes. Now we're gonna to need to do a little bit of fancy footwork on, on this to cut that little piece off. It's so simple. Take your pencil and make yourself a dot right there at the top of where that yellow piece of cardstock is on this piece here. And all we're going to do is we're going to angle cut, and you can open everything back up to do this. We're going to angle cut up to this and all the way up to there. So if you prefer, take your ruler. This might work a little bit better if you um, if you have difficulty in keeping your angle straight. You can lay your ruler across here and draw a very faint line and just cut that off. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my paper snips because I think I have more control over them. So I'm just going to go from the corner here all the way up to the top corner here. And if I see that I have any pencil mark left there, I'll just grab my eraser and come in and erase that. Just like that. You definitely don't want pencil mark to show on your card. Something like that. And then 
I wonder why that, oh, it's eraser. <laughs> I was like, why is that showing black on there like that? It was little crumbs from my eraser. Okay, so there is her fold. Is that not gorgeous? And we haven't even decorated it yet. So we still need to cut our pieces. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with this piece. And I'm going to cut out any of these little balloons that I want to die cut. And I know that this is one that I want to die cut. So I'm going to cut that one out. I also want this round one right here, the blue one. So I'm going to come up and just cut across there. I may want that yellow one. So I'm going to be kind of careful when I come down on that one. And I'm going to just cut around this bottom one. We could use that one too. So I'm going to show you how you can use all of these. I'm going to cut that off. Cut out that yellow one. That's a beautiful lemon lolly. So let's lay this over to the side and we're going to bring up our small die cut machine because this, um, the dies will accommodate or your small machine will accommodate the dies for this particular um, bundle. So I'm going to grab my dies and I'm going to go in and grab that heart die. And another thing too, Valentine's Day is coming up. These are beautiful hearts to use on your um, Valentine cards. So kind of keep that in mind. So all I'm going to do is line this up with that die. Something like that. Even if you're not. So there's that balloon. And now I want to show you, let's grab a piece of scrap cardstock. And this is a nice piece here. I'm going to lay the plates over here just for a moment. And we are going to use this die that comes in that set. And I'm going to cut that off. Maybe we'll go this way. Sometimes it's not as stressful on your machine to go that way. And I also want to cut out of white a couple of these little clouds. Because we need some clouds on our hot air balloon ride. We need to see some pretty puffy clouds in the sky. So I'm going to cover that with a sticky note or a flag. And this one as well. And then we're going to run all of this through our dye machine. I'm going to lay that balloon there. And let's pull our little chain back over. Plates. Put that on. I'm bringing that down about a little ways from the top because when I put my my top plate over it, I want it to go forward quite a bit. That really helps your machine start feeding that through. So then everything else cranks through much easier. So there we go. We got those cut. And when I get to 5,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a brand new uh, stamp and cut and emboss machine, the Mini. So I have that in a box ready to be shipped out to our winner once I reach 5,000 subscribers. And we don't have far to go. We are at 36 now, so we need, what, about 1,500 more or less. Uh, there's our clouds, and there's our little banner. So we're going to stamp on that banner and hope that I can get it centered right. We're going to hope for that. If we don't, we'll just cut the banner again. Okay, pick up a little bit of ink, it looks like. That's okay. That's all right. I think we'll be able to camouflage. I'm going to use my Versafine uh, Onyx Black ink because that gives me a nice depth of color. And I really want this to pop amongst the pastels. So I'm going to stamp. I think I want to do the wish big. I think I want wish big. I didn't do that one earlier. I did a different one. And I think wish big, I don't have to worry about this not working in here. And to make sure I'm going to bring out my stamp, my um, Misty, and I'm going to set this down. And I've got silicone pads in here, so I don't have to use the magnets. I love that. 
and then I can set this right where I want it. Just like that. And pick that up. Oops, it picked up my paper as well. That's not what I wanted. Let's make sure that that is adhering where I need it. There. Maybe I need to put that there. That needs to come over just a little bit now. So let's go ahead and ink this up. Usually with this ink, you only have to stamp once, but if we do need to stamp twice, we won't have any problem doing so. I'm going to go ahead and hit it one more time because I want it to be nice and bright. And there we go. And there is our sentiment. And we're going to show you how we're going to put that in the middle of our um, one of our hot air balloons. While we've got this piece out, let's go ahead and stamp on this. Let's lay this in here, and I don't think I'll need those magnets, because so I'm going to put it into the corner like that. And I'm going to take a larger balloon. I already had that on a block. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> this one right here. So I'm going to pull it off of the block. And we're going to stamp it. I think I want this one in something darker, so I'm going to do the blue azure. I think that would be perfect for this one. Put that back into my corner. I can lay a couple of magnets right there. And I'm going to grab that beautiful azure afternoon. It's a very pretty bright blue. And I'm going to ink up the stamp just like that. And then give that a press. Isn't that gorgeous? This is the good thing about having a stamp positioner is you can re-stamp and re-stamp. Uh, until you get the color that you want. And I love that right there. So we're going to go with that color. I do want to stamp my basket. And I think I'm just going to stamp it right here. And I'm going to do it in pecan pie. I already have it on a block. So I'm just going to stamp it right about here. That way we can just cut that all in one shot. So let's pull that out, the cloth, and wipe off my stamp. We'll put our stamp back over here so we can put it back into our case. And now we're going to take the jar. It cuts this whole big stamp out, and we're going to cover that just, I got glue on my finger. We're going to lay that over top, position it so that you're not seeing any of the outer white showing. And then seal it down. And again, I'm going to use the larger basket because that's the one that I cut here. And I'm going to line that up over top. And stick that down, something like that. And I think we're ready to push these through our die cut machine and cut those pieces out. So 
I'm going to lay those in much better. And those pieces should be cut perfectly now. And let's pop it out. There is our basket. And there is our hot air balloon. So pretty. All we have to do now is attach our balloon to the bottom, like this. And I like to do that by just using a little bit of glue. So what I'm going to do is take just a tiny bit of glue and put it on each side of this balloon. Just like that, just that tiny little bit. And then we're going to put this right into the glue. Turn it around because you want to make sure that you're getting that as even on there as you can. Let it sit for a moment. And this big wish is going to fit right into that area right there. Isn't that beautiful? I love, I just love that. I think it is so pretty. We're going to pop that up with dimensionals because I really want that to kind of pop out a little bit. So I think three dimensionals across there would be perfect. And you could have cut this in a different color and then cut out the middle for the big wish. You have this piece here as well that would cut you a perfect piece that would fit right in there. So that is another option that you could do. So there's, like I said, this set has so many different options that just makes it so much fun to play with. So I'm going to take those, get my backers off. And then I'm going to set this in just like that. And there is our balloon to go on the front of our card. So let's bring our card back in. So this can go right here. Love that. I think I want to use a piece of the baker's twine, maybe the yellow. And we're going to tie a little bow and put it right up under the big wish. I do we want the pink? Maybe the pink would be pretty. That loop and this one. Do we get them about the same size? Like that. And then let's see if we want to leave some streamers. I think we do. Maybe about like here and here. It'll work. Now I'm going to take a little glue dot and I want the glue dot to go like right about there and I want to roll it so that it's not very big. So I'm going to actually use my fingers for that. So I'm going to expose one of my glue dots right there. I'm just going to pull it off with my fingers and roll it. And then I'm going to sit it down right where I want my bow to be, which is right up underneath the big wish. I'm going to set that knot right down in there, and I'm going to press it. And then to kind of turn my tails on my bow, or my loops, just to get those open like I want them. And now we have a little bow on our balloon, and that can go on here. Again, we're going to use dimensionals because they make everything pop and beautiful. So let's put a couple across the top. Let's put one right there at the bottom. And one right there. And I'm going to use a small one on my basket. 
Well, let's pull these off. Now we can set that down right about here. There's the front of our card. Isn't that cute? So as we open our card, we're going to decorate each one of our pieces. Now we forgot our balloons, I mean our clouds. So I'm going to put one cloud right there and one maybe right here. I think that'd be cute. And these are also going to go on dimensionals and I'm going to use the mini a little mini dimensionals for this as well. Anytime you got small spaces, the smaller dimensionals work so well. So this can go right up here. And then this one is going to go down at the bottom. Those backers all. And this one's going to go right over here. All right. So now I'm going to look back at my stamp set. And I want to use this one that says hip hip. Uh, up, up, and away. Hooray, it's your day. That's the one I wanted to use for my next panel. So there's a couple of things we can do. You know, we have, um, we also have a cloud punch. And I think the cloud punch would be cute. And let's see if our sentiment will fit in there. And if it does, then we have found exactly what we need for that piece. So I'm going to grab another piece of cardstock and punch that out. Great companion punch to have to this set. And let's put this one, and it will fit. Wonderful. I'm going to use that same black ink again, or do I want to go with blue? Hmm. You know, balmy blue would have been nice for the cloud. Let's try, let's try balmy blue. I think balmy blue would be cute for the cloud and then stamp the black inside. Let's see how that looks. Maybe we'll do the white cloud behind it just a little bit. Maybe something like this. That would be cute. And that could go right there. I like that. So let's stamp in our Versafine ink. Grab my little mat. This is my stamp and pierce mat. And I'm going to stamp that right about there. And I'm going to use just a tiny bit of glue right here, just a little bit, and kind of put that with that so they kind of look off-centered just a little bit. And then I'm going to put glue on the back of all of it. And we'll tuck this in right here. Wish big, up, up, and away, hooray, it's your birthday. And then we're going to do a happy birthday back here. But I want to do another um, another balloon. So I'm wondering if one of these we cut out like this. Maybe we can put it right there. And maybe cut a banner. Let's try a banner. We're going to need a basket. So here's the little basket that we had earlier. Let's 
So let's go ahead and attach that. Again, we're just going to put a little tiny bit of glue right here at the bottom, just like that. And then attach our basket from under here. Something like that. Looks so pretty. And then we can just pop this. Why not? We'll have it going at an angle, and we're going to do a banner right in here. And I want it just to say happy birthday. So I'm going to get, go to what I always go to, my go-to greetings to get a happy birthday. And I love this one right here. And we are going to stamp that. And I'm going to get my stylus shaped eyes. So I think that'll be perfect for our happy birthday. And I'm using the largest banner die. And that will accommodate that. So now we can go ahead and stamp this. Right there. And I'm going to grab that same black ink because I'm carrying through the same theme with my ink all the way through. I'm going to put that right there. Beautiful. And I'm going to put this over top. And my little plastic flags right there. And let's crank that through our machine. I have such a mess on my desk, y'all. Are y'all messy crafters or neat crafters? I love to have a, a clean work surface when I start. It just it just makes me flow much better. But it's never that way when I finish. It's always a complete chaos. And um, then I have to clean it all up before I can start my next project. Pop that out. And now we are ready to put this happy birthday banner. I want it to stick out just a little bit on the side. So it doesn't bother me if that pokes out a little bit because we're going to put it right here. I want to make sure it's nice and straight. And I think I'm going to attach that balloon right there to it. So let's put this down first. And I'm, I'm putting this all down flat because I don't want dimension inside my card. So I'm going to put this down right about here. And I want to put this right about there. Do I want the yellow or do I want the pink? That's got ink on it because look at my hands. I got ink on my hands. <laughs> that never fails that I get ink on something. I actually got it on my card right there a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and put some glue on this one. And I'm going to pop that right about here. And I'm going to grab my Mono Sand Eraser and see if I can clean that up just a hair. We didn't clean it up too well, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to put a gem there. I always say you can always cover up with your gems. Now, when I get a new pack of gems, these have not been opened yet. I want to cut them up the side. Like this. And the reason I like to do that, it just makes them much easier to slide out like this. Aren't those gorgeous? I'm going to use some of the blue ones. I think. Or do I want yellow? No, I want blue. I'm going to take one of those and put here. And maybe one right. I dropped it. 
and I dropped it without putting the, without getting adhesive on it. If that ever happens to you, this is where your take your pick tool comes in so, so handy. Pick up your gem, set it back down on your glue, and then slide it off. That works every single time, and it makes it where it works perfectly. I'm going to grab a yellow one. It's a small one. Put it right there. And I think that's all I'm going to do. Do I want any on the outside? Let's do a couple. I like that. I think that makes the card pop. All right, we're going to move everything out of our way. With all of our punches and scissors and what have you, so we can just kind of center in on how pretty our card is. Isn't that? And it is mantle worthy. It will sit up on the mantle like that. If you need more space to sign and you don't want to write on the designer series paper, turn it over and put a panel back here, and then you can write your message. But I love this card. It will fit in an A2 size envelope. So your standard envelopes that we have, this card will fit in here. So you can very easily slide it in just like that. So be careful if you have dimension on it like I do. Make sure it gets tucked in. But you can see it's a little bulky, so you may have to put a little bit more postage on it. But it does fit in an envelope. And look how pretty that card is. Let me know in the comments what you think and if this is a card that you would make. It's so easy, so simple, and yet it's so beautiful. And look at these, look at these beautiful layers. Who wouldn't love this card for their birthday? I know I would. So get busy and start crafting, y'all. If you're interested in any of the products that I've used in making this card, they can all be found at my Stamping Up website. That information is listed below the video. It's also on my blog. So if you click on my blog, you will find everything there. Pictures of the card. You'll find the video. You'll find the PDF tutorial with all the measurements and the guidelines and everything to make it. You'll also find my host code. So if you decide to shop with me, use that host code and you'll get a free um, card kit to make three beautiful cards. So, uh, and it will be out of the mini catalog. So, um, I will not be able to send stamp damages. That is against the compliance of stamping up, but die cuts, all of the designer series paper, the card stock, embellishments, all of that will be sent to you in the card kit. So, uh, I appreciate your business. God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Savior Jesus. He is worthy. Until next time, God bless and keep you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.